Hey, it's Mike here, and today, highly pathogenic avian or bird flu in cows, as well as about one in five samples of the national milk supply, in terms of cow's milk at least, from the FDA. Well, the CDC is issuing a new health alert after recent bird flu outbreaks among cattle. Infected herds of dairy cows. The Food and Drug Administration says fragments of H5N1, also known as bird flu, has been found in one in five samples of pasteurized milk. CDC, FDA, and the USDA all increasing surveillance of the bird flu outbreak in poultry and especially cow herds across the United States. So. How safe is it to buy that gallon of milk from grocery stores? It comes as officials say the risk to the public remains low. This may indicate that the outbreak among dairy cows is wider than what we thought. The so CDC is asking states to be prepared to respond to future cases. Yes, avian flu has spread to cows in this case, and there's strong evidence that it's spreading between cows, which is a major concern. But yes, it is the case that the flu flew the coop. I'm sorry about that one, I had to. And the question here is, is it all bark and no bite? Is it all moo and no murder? Well, we're gonna investigate. Yeah, we're gonna look at the nitty gritty of how it is spreading between cows as well as the human case that has occurred and potentially more human cases, the cat deaths from this that we've seen and the general concern around this. However, I will say, with the news that it doesn't appear that all of this milk is contagious. Some of it might be, which we'll get into. But because this virus isn't like currently killing thousands of people, a lot of people are dismissing the risk of this virus entirely, which I'm gonna go ahead and say we shouldn't do. And we should talk about, you know, the potential future concerns as well. We'll get into all of it. Let's go. So the FDA did a test of a national sample of milk from 38 different states, about 300 samples, and found that, yeah, 20% of them tested positive for this H5N1 viral material. However, it's important to notice that these were viral remnants and not live virus. And that's because of pasteurization, which we will get to, but it is also worth noting that a independent scientist went and got 150 samples of his own with a student and found found that in the Midwest where he took his samples, nearly 40% tested positive. But what is this strain of bird flu exactly? Well, it is the H pi H5N1, which you don't know what that stands for? Well, it appears the real virus here could be the overuse of acronyms. I oh, know it stands for highly pathogenic avian influenza, referring to the pathogenic and deadly nature in the birds themselves, and we'll talk about humans in a bit, but then H5N1 refers to the surface protein. There's a bunch of different H proteins, which are what helps this virus get into the cells that it's infecting, so it's H5, and then there's a bunch of different N possibilities, which is how the virus gets out of those cells it's infected once it replicates, and that's N1. And here's the reason that this has been at the top of my radar for a while is that while it is very lethal in birds, it is also quite lethal in humans. Worldwide, we've had nearly 900 cases in 23 countries. And of those known cases, we've seen a case fatality rate of over 50%, over half of the cases die. Experts have put this as a contender for a future global pandemic. Fun stuff, love to hear it. And it's also the case that has been in the news. It's what caused that egg shortage last year. Also just published, apparently a dolphin died of it, which is like, whoa, what the heck? So it's in the news a lot. And the last point before we get into this cow stuff is that we need to remember that all flus originally were bird flus until they jumped to other animals or became more lethal through farming. And so that 1918 pandemic flu really should have been called instead of the Spanish flu, the 1918 Kansas chicken flu, you know, because the best guess that scientists have as to where it started was Haskell, Kansas on a small chicken farm. All right, now let's talk about cows. In March, 2024, for the first time, this virus jumped to cows. You could call it a cow jump scare. I'm trying to make light of this, but it's disturbing. Anyway, now it is in 36 herds across nine different states, according to the CDC. Here's a map of that. Again, 20% of the national milk supply has these viral fragments just from these herds, which are probably massive. From the CDC, this multi-state outbreak was first reported in cows on March 25th. And that's the first time that these bird flu viruses were found in cattle. 
And your hope is that the first time a virus ends up jumping to another animal, it's not gonna be transmitted between that animal. Well, oh wait, wait, what it is in this case? Well, looking to Vox who interviewed Louise Monkla, a veterinary pathologist at the University of Pennsylvania. They say genetic data and epidemiologic data are all quite strongly suggesting that these viruses are getting transmitted in some way between these cows. Their team is the one that did genetic analysis. And so the question is, how is this spreading? Well, luckily there seems to be spotty positive tests for actual lung samples from cows. However, it appears to be very much infecting their udders, the exact point where the milk is made. So it appears that the spread that is happening here is from dairy cows in milk parlors on these milking machines and switching out with other cows who then come in contact with the virus. From a viro scientist out of the Netherlands, they say, the amount of virus in the udders of infected cows is off the charts high. You can imagine that if such a cow is milked in a milking stall, even a few drops of milk remaining on the teat cup, oh God, I love this industry, which is used to milk, will then subsequently contaminate the teat of the next cow. I'm just so happy to not be drinking from teats as a 30 something year old <laughs> and get this really gross fact from the, the University of Nebraska, quote, sick cows have a mild illness and produce less milk, which is thicker than usual, resembling colostrum. Oh, look at that, yogurt directly from the cow. What will they think of next? So gross. And this does make me think, yeah, that's the extra immune cells in there. And it is worth mentioning that legally from the FDA, you can have 750 million somatic cells per liter of cow's milk. Somatic cells is a mix of immune cells from the cows, which you know could be described as pus, as well as just what they're shedding off of their udder. And while a lot of states are higher, our national average is about 230 million cells per liter. I love oat milk. And the source for cows getting it appears to be wild birds, who of course originally got it from domesticated birds. My guess is the grackle or other blackbirds, which have been found sick or dead from H5N1 in Texas a few times in March now, in Hartley, which is a large dairy producing county with infected cows. Though genomic data shows the jump probably has happened in January, but these birds are known to spread pathogens at dairy farms. So the poop could have gotten on the dairy farmer's hands who touched the udders or directly on cow udders or equipment. And as this Nature article mentions, they have found that cows are transmitting it back to birds, which may be how it's getting from farm to farm. And at this point, H5N1 is not very well adapted to attacking cow lungs, but for whatever reason, the receptor similarity on these udders makes it so they can latch onto those. And this is the big problem is that the more mammals that this virus has a chance to infect, the more likely it is to evolve to be able to effectively in fact, humans, fact, fact. And uh, it is also the case that there was a mink to mink outbreak, but that is a situation where the mink have two different lung receptors, one of which they share with chickens. We don't have that one, thankfully. Which brings us to infections in humans. Again, there's been almost 900 with an over 50% case fatality rate. So what about now? Well, it appears that there has been a case of human infection from these cows in Texas. The Texas Department of Health reported on this on April 1st, and it appears that it was an 18 year old. Thankfully, they had a robust immune system. Being younger, they mainly got conjunctivitis, which is an eye infection. But as a dairy vet in Texas mentioned, there is a strong case that even more dairy workers were infected, but never got tested since many dairy workers had flu-like symptoms around that time. We're talking about things like vomiting and diarrhea, but also more conjunctivitis cases, swelling of the eyelids. This is also a reporting issue due to undocumented workers and dairy farms only having risk and no incentive to report. The agency issuing a new health alert asking public health officials for plans to test and treat farm workers potentially impacted by the virus. And this is where we're lucky so far that human to human transmission has not been fully confirmed. However, there was, for example, from the WHO in the past, small clusters of infections of the virus involving healthcare workers where limited human to human transmission could not be excluded. However, we have yet to see sustained transmission.
And while we don't share that same chicken and mink receptor, it is the case that again from the CDC, although it is uncommon at this point, H5N1 viruses can bind to receptors in the human lower respiratory tract. We'll talk more about the potential for it adapting in a bit, but we gotta just get on a little bit of a warning here. And that is, you know, why we're not seeing more than viral particles, we're not seeing fully intact live virus in the commercial milk supply, and that's because it's pasteurized, it's heated, etc. But in raw milk, it's not. We have a lot of uh, crazies out there, like the Weston A. Price Foundation and you know various raw milk people, raw milk girlies, like this one on TikTok recently. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Of course I drink raw milk. Here's why our family switched to drinking raw milk. For one, it is easier for your body to digest. I got the raw milk delivery today. I wanna to show you guys this. So good for you. This is nothing like that pasteurized, homogenized milk you get in the stores, guys. But yeah, pushing raw milk and ignoring the potential health risks. This is so bad that an analysis found that within a given year, 4% of the US population has consumed raw milk with about 2.7% of the population consuming it monthly, which is nearly 9 million people if that report is accurate. We already know that raw milk comes with an over 800 times infection risk compared to pasteurized milk. But now of course, experts are warning against consuming raw milk because of this cowbird flu. There was enough concern that when I was researching this section, I took a quick break and came back and saw that there was a new New York Times article about it. Now, Dr. Rosemary Sifford of the USDA said in a Wednesday briefing, their test had found, quote, high viral load in raw cow's milk, and that federal officials believe that the primary way the virus is spreading between cows is through contact with milk. Of course, that can happen in those milking machines. To emphasize this risk, we have an official scientific report showing that eight dozen cats who consumed raw milk on these farms actually died of the virus, adding to this mammal to mammal spread concern. And that was half of the cats that were exposed, you know, roughly that same human case fatality rate. You know, this is adding to that mammal to mammal spread concern. You know, it's possible that there's somebody out there right now who has the flu from drinking raw cow's milk. We might not know about it. They might just think they have the normal flu. They're not gonna get tested or whatever. But again, every time that this virus comes in contact with or infects a human, that's another opportunity for the virus to evolve. Now to reiterate this in terms of the spillover concern for human pandemics to this Vox article, Seema Lakdawala, you know, virologist and influenza transmission specialist at Emory University, they say, due to the high viral load in milk from infected cows, it's a concern for me in terms of spillover from cows to workers. And the more often the virus has an attempt to spill over, the more likely it is to adapt. Now we can think of every human and infected animal contact as like a unit of viral risk, or even just every infected human would be an even bigger unit of viral risk. Seema continues with, it's a number game, although all viruses mutate routinely, flu viruses are particularly good at shape-shifting and can even swap entire chunks of genetic material with other flu viruses if an animal is co-infected with more than one of them. So someone could have their typical holiday flu, which is well adapted to attaching to human receptors, and if they get exposed to this working on a dairy farm or a chicken farm, then they could have some horizontal gene transfer, fun stuff. In the end, well, the sentiment, the response to this viral outbreak appears to be, oh, well, you know, it's not immediately threatening me. Let's just, you know, continue business as usual, whatever. The problem is that business as usual, which involves 70 billion chickens being raised and slaughtered per year, those having contact with humans and other animals and all this contact between all of those, again, increases that risk of it spreading to humans, spreading between humans. And then uh, we all know we don't want another panty. And the fact that it's already spread to cows adds to this concern because we have about a billion cows on planet Earth. So this is just another new mammalian reservoir that could help become a training ground to infect humans. And of course, all the animals suffering from this as well, not cool. So this all adds up to another reason that we need to move away from relying on animal farming for our food and just raising and slaughtering so many freaking animals that the math is not on our side. All right, let me know down below what you think about all of this. If there are any details I missed, new news about this, share it below. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, share the video, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.